Wake up! Almighty God, humbly acknowledging our need for thy guidance in all things and laying aside all private and personal interests, we beseech thee to grant that we may conduct the affairs of this house and of our country to the glory of thy holy name, the maintenance of true religion and justice, the honour of the Queen, and the public welfare, peace and tranquillity of New Zealand, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Honourable Jerry Brownlee. Uh, Mr Speaker, when the House resumes next week, priority will be given to the committee stage and third readings of the Electoral Finance Reform and Advanced Voting Amendment Bill, the Parliamentary Service Amendment Bill and the Electoral Referendum Bill. Uh, Mr. Ha Mr Speaker, depending on progress this week, the House would expect uh, to adjourn sometime next week. The Hon. Darren Hughes. Uh, Mr Speaker, I wonder if the um, Leader of the House could be a little more uh, fulsome in his explanation of the uh, House's program as we uh, come to the end of the year, particularly uh, with respect to the legislation that he is uh, hoping to progress through uh, urgency. It's clear from all parties that uh, all parties do regard the electoral bills as being urgent matters that need to be passed uh, by the end of the year, uh, but, but why it is necessary to take urgency on other bills which are not as urgent and leave the bills that are urgent out of the urgency motion. Uh, given that previously in this business statement, when we've taken him on his word, he's uh, sought the cooperation of parties for urgency on non-controversial bills in order to avoid exactly the kind of urgency he's about to subject the House to before the end of the year. The Honourable Jerry Brown. Uh, well, a number of points, Mr Speaker. First, the way in which urgency has been conducted uh, this year has been uh, designed to give the Business Committee a great deal more input into when that occurs and, and uh, what is to be covered during that time. But that doesn't take away from the fact that we are a very busy, very active government who have a very active programme. Uh, you will be aware, Mr Speaker, more than anybody, that the House is due to lift shortly uh, for a seven- to eight-week recess. Uh, and therefore, when we come back, there will be a Prime Minister's statement, and much of February will be taken up in the uh, reply that is made to that statement. Uh, so we need to get a whole lot of first readings done in order to get those bills... Uh, to select committees. Uh, nothing wrong with that, Mr Speaker. And I think most New Zealanders would be rather shocked to hear the Labour Party uh, complaining about having to work for more than 17 hours a week in the House. And we think that that's not enough time. That's why we are taking uh, a few extra hours. Uh, point of order, the Honourable Darren Hughes. Speaker, the, order, the, this is now a point of order. Point of order, sir. The, the point of the uh, business statement given by the Leader of the House is to outline the programme. There's a response from the opposition. Uh, I asked him some questions about why he was going down a certain path with respect to some bills which are urgent that are not being taken under urgency and other bills that are not urgent that are going to be in urgency. Uh, and I asked him the, uh, those questions and instead we get a stream of abuse saying, oh, well, Labor Party doesn't want to work uh, a certain number uh, of hours. Order, That's an abuse, sir. Order, there was, I was happy to listen to the Honourable Member but mustn't uh, use the point of order process to start getting into a debate about who's been uh, abusive, but I must confess... Uh, I acknowledge that the, the questions the member put weren't answered as, in such a, as fully as he would have liked, but that's uh, a matter for the Leader of the House, and I can't intervene in that, in that process. Are there any uh, point of order, the Honourable Chair Brown? I did answer those questions. I answered them very, in very straight terms. I'm sorry if you didn't understand what I said, but I gave him an answer to the question that he asked. The fact is, the House is going to an eight-week recess we think doing a little bit of extra time ahead of that is not a bad idea. I apologise. I apologise to the whole House for my stupidity. Uh, are there any petitions? The petition of Darian Fenton requesting that the House note that 20,260 people have signed an online petition opposing NZTA's intention to charge for access to basic data from the Motor Vehicle re Register and asking that the information continue to be provided free of charge. The petition of Luana Bosson-Quay-Hayes 
and 239 others requesting that the House take urgent action to prevent climate change from damaging the Pacific Islands any further, in particular that adopt a binding target to reduce New Zealand's emissions of greenhouse gases. Are there any papers? I hereby present the report of the Parliamentary Commissioner for the Environment entitled Lignite and Climate Change, the High Cost of Low-Grade Coal. Are there any select committee reports? Reports of the Education and Science Committee on the 2009-10 Financial Reviews of the Education Review Office and the Ministry of Research, Science and Technology Reports of the Intelligence and Security Committee on the 2009-10 Financial Reviews of the Government Communications Security Bureau and the New Zealand Security Intelligence Service. Are there any bills for introduction? Crown Pastoral Land Rent for Pastoral Leases Amendment Bill Introduction. National Animal Identification and Tracing Bill Introduction. Those bills introduced the set down for first reading. The House now comes to questions for...